Well, oddly, I, um, I did sports writing for four years. The Times asked me in 1996 if I'd like to cover some football, and I said, well, why not? I've, I've done colonic irrigation for newspapers. I, I'll, try, I'll try anything once. And ever since, I've wanted to write a book about it because it's very funny, a lot of the stuff that happens at sport. I learned loads of facts. I learned loads and loads of facts about the sport, which is, of course, the main thing you have to do. And I think having written the books I've, I've also written recently about punctuation, both of which things are you can get very obsessive about. And, um, and I suppose I really like writing about people getting things out of proportion. Um, and sport's perfect from that point of view because it is something that you can get terribly out of proportion. The thing is, to me, everything was new. And that's, I think, really nice thing when you're a writer, is to come at things fresh. Yes, I was at um, Sheffield Wednesday, they used to chant, you'll never beat Des Walker. Um, which I thought, I thought they were saying, you'll never meet Des Walker. And I thought, well, that's true. That's very profound, actually. I will never meet Des Walker. But it turned out it wasn't that. <laughs> and in fact, when I went to, um, I went to New York to see a fight, the Lennox Lewis Evander Holyfield fight, which is, starts the book. And before I went, I thought I'd better mug up a bit on boxing. And I read some books on boxing. And I watched that When We Were Kings, the great film about Arlene Foreman in Zaire in 1974. And I'm the only person, I think, who's ever watched that film who didn't know how the fight turned out. And um, it's really exciting. It's terribly exciting if you really don't know that, that uh, Ali's going to win. Um, this is a little Alan Shearer statuette um, that uh, I picked up in, uh, at St Joseph's Park many years ago. Um, I grew, part of the thing in the book is that I grew to loathe Alan Shearer over, over my time uh, covering football. And now I'm OK again. I've sort of come out the other side and I don't hate him at all now. But I did really hate him at the time, and it's and I had him um, I had him on my desk all the time while I was writing the book. So I, he's quite precious, really. <laughs> so I think people are divided, aren't they, between people who love sport and get it, and people who just don't get it. The thing about people who love sport actually is they reserve the right not to like all sports. And the one that a lot of people don't seem to like is golf, I have to say, which is the one I I'm most most still uh, attracted by, and I still go to. Um, they obviously think that it's. You know, if you really want to put a little ball in a little hole, why don't you just go and put it there? Um, and, uh, and I found it very interesting that the emotional journey, in the end, is quite unsatisfactory. That it takes you on this journey and then it sort of dumps you. Um, so um, even if you win, even if you don't just have anxiety and misery, sometimes you have anxiety and relief and happiness. But you still then think, hmm, is, is it that important? And, oh dear, we've got to do it all again next year. Well, in a way, the book is like the columns I did um, in The Times, in that um, they were designed to be read by people who didn't know about sport, because um, they're accessible, and by people who do know about sport, because they understand what the joke is. So it's an account, really, of what it was like to be a sports writer, what I thought about while I was being a sports writer, what it felt like, what amused me on the job. And it's part memoir, part analysis, and um, to be honest, it's part almighty whinge about how tough it was. So I've dedicated the book to um, the two editors at the Times who sent me to football in the first place. So it says, to David Chappell and Keith Blackmore, who sent me to football, you bastards. <laughs> My book, Get Her Off The Pitch, is available now. <laughs>